Right, I'm now going to take the drum off and inspect the cylinders inside and put the new shoes in. First thing I need to do is adjust it up to stop the stop the drum from turning. Now I'm going to wind out the uh, adjuster as far as it go. It makes it easier to remove the the drum. The reason I did those up tight. Is because there's a gasket in between the half shaft flange and the bearing uh, carrier there and I've put uh, some seal around there and so I wanted to keep it nice and tight so it seals the reason that uh, gasket is there is because the oil the oil could come and seep out of here the oil from the axle could make its way along and seep out here so it's quite important that that is sealed properly those two parts are sealed together so now it's just a matter of removing the shoes now there's no pins going through these shoes like later later cars had they had a little different ways of, of fixing it to the back plate but these don't these just rely on the springs pulling it back now when you do this job it, it's handy to have a big pair of grips like this because the springs are quite strong so I can put that one there and this one's difficult because you need to watch that rubber the other side to come out now that, what was that? that spring won't come out it won't come between there but this one will so you can you can get the, this spring round and take them out like that now there's, there's two types of spring, the yellow one and the green one. The green one is shorter and it always goes on the adjuster. The, the yellow one is longer and it goes next to the cylinder. And when you're putting the shoes back, it's difficult to know which way to put them around. The two holes go by the adjuster on both of them and the single hole goes on the long spring so the one with the notch here goes on the cylinder there like that the reason I'm going to replace these shoes is because they got soaked in oil now the top one's not too bad but obviously oil went down onto the bottom one these are brand brand new linings never been used Basically, they've been, been ruined because I've got oil on it when I jack the car up at an angle. And one thing I do with these to check is there's oil in here, 
but you can't really feel the oil or anything but you can see it's darker but if you just put a bit of heat on here I don't know if you can see that the actual oil sweats out comes out so it's a good way of checking your brake shoes for for any oil now this side I don't know. see that side it's fine so I will soak these in thinners or so, again because they're brand new it's a shame but I've got I've got replacements right this is the adjuster I'm showing all this so I'm going to show the other side as well it's because I'm sure there's people that have never actually seen inside these brakes and I mean owners as well but the vast majority of the owners have done this many times I'm sure but there are some people that don't know what's involved with it and this will help them hopefully this will help them out now these are this is the adjuster so you can see there's there's angle angle on there and oh, it's stuck let's just wind this down now you can see here that that's a cone shape and it's got the same angle as these plungers but there's all, there's four flats on the cone. You can see those four flats there. So basically, as you wind it in, as you wind it in, it it pushes these further out, and that that adjusts just the the uh, shoes. And I need to take this uh, plate off, but I'm just taking it off to show people that haven't seen it before. Okay, so this is the the ham brake mechanism, and that and that's basically how it works. So as you as you pull the ham brake, that goes in and out like that, and it's 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 that action. So the reason I'm doing this is to make sure these are, these are free, and actually, it's they seem quite tight. Perhaps they've gummed up. So the actual piston is perfect. Yes, it is. It is dry. I'll take the other side out. So I'm glad I took that out. I'll take, take that off. Push it through with this. Oh, that is quite tight. Okay. Yeah, that, that, that is it is dry actually. I think you can see that that, that is no scores whatsoever you don't want any scores on that rubber this is the uh, brake fluid I, I bought this many years ago to put in this car and the reason I'm going for silicon brake fluid is because all, all the uh, engine compartment has all been sprayed with cellulose and I know what's going to happen brake, brake fluids is going to drip down and ruin all my work so that's the only reason i chose silicon brake fluid
Okay. I've been reading the workshop manual and there's one thing on these cars that I didn't realise is these support pins they support the side of the shoe and they rub on the side of the shoe there they're threaded in from the back and there's a lock nut on the back they are adjustable in and out and I didn't understand what the book was saying at first but what they're saying is in the book is that when you fit new brake shoes you need to adjust this position so you don't want it like that too far out you don't want it too far in because it will just hit up, rub on one side of the shoe so what they say is you assemble it all and you get get the drum running free and then you screw that that pin in which is making it go like this until you can feel this side rubbing and then you wind it out and you count how many turns you wind it out until this side touches and then you wind it back half the amount of turns and in theory that should be dead level with the the drum then so I'm going to do that in a minute if you bring this shoe round as far as you can get it like that then you can hold this spring out it goes on easy like that and then this one that one goes in there like that so now you put, you put this side in first because it hasn't got this bit to grip to so you can put this side in first on on both both shoes it's the bottom oops Now, in theory, you should be able to just pull these out. So, ah, see now, that's not on the handbrake thing. This one wants to go that way as well. Like that. One of the problems you get with these these handbrake linkages is that they stick. Now that that's that's rubbing, but it should be back now it's free so the springs on the shoes are not strong enough to push this back now, all, all the linkages that everything's all nice and loose it's, it's not this so what Ford have done lost it what Ford have done is they put that spring from the arm to the drain hole in the back plate and that, that solves the problem and it always goes back to the same stop. It's, it's easier to, to put this spring back with, with this link rod removed because it allows the arm to go a little bit further this way. So there's a long end and a short end. I think the long end is better on the bottom to clear this. Now this is where it flies out, goes across the garage, and I'll spend the next four hours looking for it. So luckily that didn't happen. So now, now it's going all the way back. Well, I've adjusted the brakes so they're not touching at all. So now I'm going to wind this side adjuster in 
until it just touches. Right, that's just that's just touching there. So now I wind it out one half turn. One, two, three, four. Four. It's about five. So now I turn it this way, two and a half. One, two, half. That. What I'm counting is half turns, 180 degrees of the screwdriver. I'll just give it, try to relocate it like this. I've been reading a book about these adjustable stops on the back plate and it looks as though this is a later mod because this is a late model car and in the book it says they were fitted to all consoles and Zephyr 6s from engine number 210021 and 161561 and they mentioned brake judder so it looks as though they, they had problems with brake judder and it was something to do with the, the shoe wasn't laying correctly for some reason. So obviously this could be fitted to an earlier model. They just they tell you to drill and tap the back plate and then put a nut at the back and weld a nut on the back um, and then put the pin in. It must be a longer pin and then put another nut on top of it to lock it up so that, that could easily be modified for the, the earlier cars so that's the end of these three videos in the next video i will be fitting the petrol tank Hope you enjoyed it and see you next time.